Chicken scallopini is one of the easiest to make dishes out there, making it the perfect weeknight meal to serve up to your family or friends. It's delicious, it's quick, and it can go well with just about any sauce. But for me, I'm gonna top off with a buttery, cheesy roasted mushroom sauce going to be ridiculously delicious. Let's start off by knocking out some prep. Sound good? Let's cook. I've got two 10 ounce boneless skinless chicken breasts. When I buy fresh chicken, I'm making sure that it's firm, light pink in color and has small amounts of white pieces of fat. Now we're gonna make this a scallopini, which really means a thin piece of meat, traditionally with veal or chicken. So what we're gonna do is slice it in half widthwise. This is also known as a butterfly cut. Using one hand, press down on the chicken breast to hold it in place and using your chef knife and the other hand, slice through it completely. Then just repeat the process with the other chicken breasts. Then one at a time, add one piece of chicken to a plastic zip bag, then using a mallet or a medium sized pot, gently pound down 25 to 30 times to flatten it out and tenderize it. But as you pound down, press it out to the side so that you're not pulverizing one specific area. Then what we're gonna do is set it to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. And now I'm going to generously season it with coarse salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Now, whenever you season anything, be sure to season high about a foot off of what you are seasoning so that it covers a good amount of surface area, ensuring every bite is delicious. Then we're gonna briefly set it to the side for a few minutes while the salt and pepper permeate through the chicken to make it absolutely delicious. And make sure to give your cutting board a good scrub down with hot water and soap because, well, raw chicken was on it. In the meantime, we're gonna prep up everything else, starting with mushrooms. I've got eight ounces each of button and baby bella mushrooms. The most common mushrooms used in Italy are button mushrooms, portobellas, porcinis, or chanterelles. If you can get your hands on any of those, fantastic. And because these are dirty, we want to clean them up. I've got a damp paper towel. All you do is gently rub it on the surface, on the stem, removing any dirt or unwanted particles. Don't be overly firm with it. Then for slicing it up, what I like to do is slice it a little off the end and then roll it over. This helps to stabilize it so that it's not rocking back and forth. Then I'm gonna take quarter inch to half inch thick slices to watch it again up close, slice off the end, roll it over, see how it stays flat. This will help it stabilize so that it's not rocking back and forth while you're trying to slice it. Completely slice all the mushrooms and then just set them to the side in a bowl. Next, I have one medium sized shallot, which I'm gonna slice off the end, slice it in half, and then remove that outside peel. Then I'm gonna small dice just one half of it. I do not need the other half, save it for another recipe in the refrigerator. You could also use a red, white, or sweet onion here if that's all you have. Then I have two garlic cloves, which I'm going to give a quick smash, and then finely mince using my chef knife. And now to prep up the cheese, I have some Parmigiana Reggiano in a box grater, which I'm going to use the fine grated side. And I almost always do this over parchment paper so that it's easy to transport. We're going to grate until we have about three quarter to one cup. It does not have to be a perfect measurement here. Then set it to the side next to the other mise en place that we've already prepped up. Only a few more things to do before cooking time. We are going to slice up 12 total tablespoons of unsalted butter. Then I'm gonna put it in a container and put it in the freezer. We want it to be ice cold for the sauce. And now for the breading. I have a third cup of all-purpose flour. You can put this in a cake tin, pie tin, or even a wide shallow bowl. Give it a quick small season with salt and pepper. Mix it together. I always like to give it a little taste to make sure I can taste some of those seasonings. Then to bread up. Pay attention close, Comey's. This is gonna move fast. One at a time, place the chicken breast in the seasoned flour and completely dredge it, coating it on all sides. Repeat the process until all the chicken breasts have been completely floured up and place them on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Let's take this over to the cooktop where I have a large 12 inch stainless steel pan. You could also use a nonstick skillet as well. We're going to crank the heat up to medium. Next, I'm gonna add in three to four tablespoons of olive oil. You're going to need enough to pan fry the chicken and the mushrooms. We're gonna heat this for about 60 to 90 seconds or until it reaches about 325 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to add in our chicken breasts just until I'm out of room in the pan, but I'm searing it, not steaming, so do not overlap any chicken. If you have to do this in batches, so be it. After three to three and a half minutes, we're gonna come back. See that light brown on there? That's exactly what you want. Give the chicken a flip and then continue to cook it for another three to three and a half minutes. This is a very thin chicken breast and it's going to cook very quickly. Just to come back and give it a quick flip, you can see that it's got nice brown on both sides. I'm gonna take these out and set them to the side on a plate. And because I couldn't cook them all, I've still got this one last chicken breast to fry up. And cooking is not supposed to be some daunting 
task that you dread. No, it can and it should be fun. You can absolutely pull this off, I promise you. Once that last chicken breast is cooked, just set it to the side on the plate with the other ones. Now go back over to that pan. If you have no olive oil left, add in another tablespoon or two, then put in all the sliced mushrooms that we prepared up and then immediately crank the heat up to high. We wanna take the time to brown up these mushrooms, but on high heat, you're maybe only looking at four or five minutes. See that brown starting to take place on the mushrooms? That's what we want. I like to come back every minute or so and spread out the mushrooms all over the pan to cover as much surface area as possible so that all the mushrooms are equally browned. Oh, this sauce is going to be so good. And I promise you, nothing, I mean nothing, gets a conversation started quicker around the table than delicious food. Now, once everything is browned up, I wanna encourage you to take one of the nice browned up pieces of mushrooms and try it. Oh. What a world of difference. At this stage, move all the mushrooms to one side of the pan. Then in the other side of the pan, we're gonna add in that small diced shallot, followed up with our finely minced garlic cloves. Then I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of the unsalted butter that we cut up. We are gonna saute this in this side of the pan for about 30 to 45 seconds or until it's lightly browned and the garlic becomes very fragrant. Once you can smell garlic, it is done cooking. Then mix everything together until it is completely combined. At this stage, I'm going to add in about three quarters cup of dry white wine. You could use Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, or even a Pinot Grigio if you wanna keep this nice and Italian. Remaining over a high heat, we wanna cook this down until all sec or almost gone. So there should only be a couple of tablespoons of liquid left in the pan. Now turn the heat completely off. Then we're gonna squeeze in the juice of one half lemon, which equals about one to two tablespoons. This is going to really help brighten up the sauce. To further ensure our sauce will not break, let's remove it from the heat. Now what we're gonna do is take that butter out of the freezer and add in three to four tablespoons of butter at a time while vigorously mixing to make sure that our sauce emulsifies with the white wine and the lemon juice. Do not add in any more butter until the butter before is completely mixed into the sauce. Then you should have a beautiful, nice, rich, creamy sauce, but we're not going to stop there. We are gonna add in about a third to a half cup of our grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Mix that in until it's combined. Then your sauce will thicken up even more. It will change color a little bit, become whiter, and the flavors will be so umami or delicious with all those caramelized mushrooms and Parmigiana. Then we need to season it up with salt and pepper. Remember, season once, taste twice. Taste it, season it, taste it again. Does it need a little bit more? You be the judge. Next, we're transferring the saute pan back to the burner. Do not turn it on though. It should still be plenty warm from before. We're gonna put the chicken back in there to warm it back up so it's perfect to eat. And really quick, here's a chef tip for you. If your sauce breaks, as in the butter separates from the cheese, you can bring it back. Don't stress out. Vigorously mix in one to two tablespoons of cold heavy whipping cream until it is combined. It works every time and it's foolproof. And because folks always ask, well, what's a good side dish? My Italian potatoes will be an instant hit with family and friends. Let me show you how easy they are to make. I've got a bowl full of medium to large size Yukon gold potatoes. I'm gonna cut five of them. Slice them in half, then slice them in half again, and then slice them in half one more time so that you have eight total wedges. I'm gonna place them in the bottom of a large rondeau pot, spreading them out. Then I'm gonna add in two to three tablespoons of cold water, just enough so that it covers the bottom of the pan. Now, going in the oven on the middle rack, I'm gonna place on the lid, but I'm gonna sort of move it to the side so some of that steam can escape in the oven, 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. And look, if you don't have a pan that big, don't sweat it. Just use a 13 by nine casserole dish, cover it in foil, and poke some holes in the top with a fork. Nothing more than that. Pull out our potatoes and see where we're at. They're looking good, but it needs quite a few more things. Beginning with two to three tablespoons of olive oil, then I'm gonna add in two garlic cloves, and then the leaves of two fresh sprigs of rosemary. Who am I kidding? I love garlic. Two more garlic cloves it is. Now I'm gonna season it up well with coarse salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Now using a spoon, mix it together until it's completely combined and coated in the olive oil seasonings and herbs, then spread it back out. Going in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna leave it uncovered. It's going to cook for between 20 to 25 minutes or until they become nice and tender and very lightly brown. Then using a spatula, scrape up the bottom so that nothing sticks. These are so creamy and delicious in the inside. You're gonna love these. 
It really does smell awesome in here, and this sauce is so tasty. And I'll always go back to these fundamental classic cooking techniques that just make better food for you to share with your friends or your family to ultimately create great memories. Isn't that why we do this? To see people smile? That's why we cook. That's why we love it. I'm going to show you quickly how to plate up. I'm actually going to serve it right in this pan. It looks so pretty. I'm going to sprinkle on some more of that Parmigiano Reggiano. Then using a zester, I'm just going to zest one of these lemons. It's going to give it some nice color and add some more lemon notes into our already lemony, creamy sauce. Last but not least, I'm going to finish it with some chopped fresh parsley. And for the potatoes, I'm just going to serve those up in a bowl. Be sure to get some of that delicious crisp rosemary and roasted garlic out of the pan and put it in there as well. Now my favorite part, serving it up to my family and getting their reactions. Love that they love it. My daughter even invited some neighbors over that they got to enjoy it with. We're having some great conversations. This is always my favorite part of the day. I wish these moments would never end. I'm not a 30 minute meal guy, okay? I'm just not and probably never will be. But if you give me about an hour, you can absolutely blow minds with delicious food that I think you and your family are going to love. Now, if you love this, you should absolutely check out my homemade pasta carbonara. So good, so easy to make. Got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there.